back Gothamites. If you're new here, I'm London aka History of the Batman where we relive the defining moments of one of the most iconic figures in comic book art and literature, DC Comics Batman. Let's just start with this. Batman is Bruce Wayne. Spoiler alert if you didn't know. And Bruce Wayne is grown. And he is human which means he needs companionship. And although Bruce hasn't had the best luck with romantic relationships. We are pretty sure that within this almost 80 year journey of Bruce trying to find love, he's had some just pure sexual relationships. Once again, he's human, it's natural, and it's okay. <laughs> so for this fun video, we will talk about five women in Batman's comic book history that he has slept with and their hierarchy within the Dark Knight's love life. But before we jump into this love fest, why don't you subscribe to this channel and become a part of this awesome Batman community. Alright, number five, Barbara Gordon. Yep, let's just rip that uncomfortable band-aid off right from the start. Just for a quick recap, the revamped Barbara Gordon debuted in 1967's Detective Comics 359 and she is the persona of Barbara Gordon who is the head librarian within Gotham City's library and the daughter of Commissioner James Gordon. Since this introduction and throughout most if not all of Batman mainstream continuity comic books, Batman and Batgirl have had a platonic relationship. And Batgirl has had an off and on romantic relationship with Dick Grayson aka Robin and Nightwing. Well kids, <laughs> in some outside media, Bruce and Barbara's relationship was just a little bit more than friendship. In the Batman Beyond comic book continuity, when young Terry McGinnis is the Batman within the Neo-Gotham City, he learns why Bruce and Dick Grayson have had an estranged relationship within this continuity. This very cringeworthy revelation comes into Batman Beyond 2.0 written by Kyle Higgins. So we go into this flashback and we see that Dick Grayson has left Bloodhaven and came back to Gotham City and has rekindled his romantic relationship with Barbara Gordon. Now Babs discovers that she is pregnant but as we look at that good old calendar it says that she is seven weeks pregnant, even though Grayson has only been back in town for three weeks. That's bad math. <laughs> what you learn is that while Dick has been in Bloodhaven, Babs has been hanging around with another Dick. Literally. She has been having an affair with Bruce Wayne, who is Dick Grayson's mentor and father figure and also Barbara's father's friend. So because of this, several awkward exchanges happen. Babs tells Bruce that the child is his. Bruce makes a very, very bad decision and decides to go tell Dick Grayson himself that he's the father of Babs' child. Dick punches the crap out of Bruce, which he totally deserves. And while all of this is happening, Barbara is fighting these two crooks in an alley and she gets hurt and actually loses the baby. That is so dark for so many reasons. <laughs> when this issue hit, so many people were just shook. They could not comprehend the idea of Bruce Wayne and Barbara Gordon ever even being together in that capacity. So of course, why don't you want to see that in actual animation? <laughs> in the 2016 animated adaptation of Batman the Killing Joke, after a heated discussion on a rooftop, Barbara kisses Bruce and Batman and Batgirl have sex on the rooftop. And then after that, Bruce kind of acts like total tool <laughs> to Barbara and it totally makes their relationship awkward. And it even leads to Barbara not being Batgirl anymore. And while that addition to the Killing Joke narrative as a whole has been very controversial, it does propose the question of whether or not a relationship between someone like Batman and someone like Batgirl who has worked under him, would that even work out? <laughs> More or less people aren't really with it. <laughs> but it did happen in the comics and the creators are just as curious about whether or not that dynamic works as much as you are or maybe you're not. I'm not really sure. <laughs> 
well, we should just move on to our number four pick. <laughs> now, this is just a fun one because unlike Batman and Batgirl, who have never had a romantic anything for decades and decades, and this is a relatively new experiment, the character of Black Canary and Batman have had a flirtatious back and forth for literal decades. Even though Black Canary and Green Arrow are pretty much joined at the hip and have always, well, for most of the time, have been an item in DC Comics, from 1970's Justice League of America to 1980's The Brave and the Bold, there have been instances where Black Canary and Batman kind of get a little bit too touchy-feely. And it's very, very romantic and has a lot of sexual tension. But this pre- and post-flirtatious banter gets real within Frank Miller and Jim Lee's limited series All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, which is one of my biggest guilty pleasures. I absolutely love this book. It but anyway, in issue 7 of All-Star Batman, both Black Canary and Batman have sex in the rain with their masks on. Is that a superhero kink? I guess. I don't know. And that was it. There wasn't a date after, or let's go out for coffee, or anything like that. Black Canary just has this raw passion for dudes dressed up as bats who just burn criminals alive on docks. Ah, lust. Isn't it lovely? All right, on to our third love interest. It's weird. This one is more of a love interest. <laughs> Now she's the real one. She has been one of the most solid relationships Bruce has had. None of them ever really work out, but this one, I, I am, she is one of my favorites. <laughs> I know that there have been love interests before her, whether it's Julie Madison or Vicki Vale or Linda Page, but when Steve Englehart and Marshall Rogers introduced Silver St. Cloud, Detective Comics 470, which is a part of the now iconic arc Batman's Strange Apparitions, Bruce was literally smitten with this young socialite. They started this whirlwind romance. Like, she's literally the silver lining in Bruce's romantic life for an impressive period of time. Just a fun fact, Silver St. Cloud is the first woman in comics to confirm that she had sex with Bruce Wayne within the comics. <laughs> and you can see that in Detective Comics issue 471. Literally the issue after they first meet, so Bruce wasted no time. <laughs> but despite this PDA, Silver St. Cloud also is one of the first women to actually figure out that Batman and Bruce Wayne are one and the same. Which, this is one of the reasons why Silver St. Cloud breaks up with Bruce because she is afraid that one night he won't come back because he lost his life being the vigilante of Gotham City. So as usual after that, sad Batman is sad and he's really beating up criminals like extra hard, like breaking their legs a little bit more than he should because he's upset that he lost, at the time, the love of his life. But then about 30 years pass and Silver comes back here or there from Englehart's Batman Dark Detective, even more notable limited series by Kevin Smith called The Widening Geyer. And in this book, Bruce actually asks Silver to marry him, tells her that he's Batman, and introduces her to his entire secret world. So of course, since he opened up to this one person, she dies a horribly violent death by the villain Onomatopoeia. But doesn't that just sum up Bruce's love life? Just a violent death? <laughs> I, it just seems fitting. But anyway, I do appreciate Silver St. Cloud and her own detective skills trying to figure out Batman and Bruce Wayne. But our last two women, of course I'm sure you have figured out already, but let's go to number two. And she is just the ray of sunshine. That is Talia al Ghul. Bruce, there were so many red flags with this chick. I mean, come on man, like work with me here. Well, if you aren't familiar, Talia Agul is the daughter of the eco-terrorist and head of the League of Assassins, Raz Agul. I know someone say Raish, someone say Raz. I say Raz. I'm sorry if that makes you uncomfortable. I don't know, I've heard both, so he's both. It's fine. <laughs> 
Both Talia and Roz debuted in the early 1970s when Batman was going back to his gothic roots thanks to creators like Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams. In a nutshell of their introduction, Roz and Talia are part of this huge scheme where Robin and Talia are kidnapped and Batman has to go literally across the world to save his young ward and then Roz is like, surprise, everyone's fine, I just wanted to prove that you can go through all of these hoops to be the heir to the League of Assassins when I'm gone and also to be the arm candy of my daughter. Which Talia was just all gun ho for. She was like, yep, I, see, she's fine. She's like, I'm fine with this. Us, you, me, my beloved, I am good. And of course the two are drawn to each other for obvious reasons. Bruce is attracted to Talia because she is a strong and slightly violent woman. And Talia is attracted to Bruce because of his strength and nobility. And the physical attraction is just through the roof. But everything gets kicked up a notch in Mike W. Barr's 1987 graphic novel, Batman Son of the Demon. Not only do Talia and Bruce get married and consummate that marriage, it's all in the comic, but she becomes pregnant. So what is a normal response for a woman who realizes that her husband is Batman? This vigilante that risks his life every night and wonders what are they going to do with this newborn child they're bringing to this relationship? Why, she decides that she's going to fake a miscarriage and divorce him so he doesn't have to deal with all of that. Which breaks Batman's heart. But another surprise at the end, she never had the miscarriage and she had the baby. It even gets way more soap opery than that. Thanks to our eccentrically awesome uncle Grant Morrison in 2006 when in the arc Batman and Son he reintroduces the baby within mainstream continuity and he is Damian Wayne. And it goes just as well as you think it does. But to rush through this craziness of this triangle of a family, Damien eventually becomes Robin. Talia starts up this shady organization called Leviathan, which actually puts a bounty on Damien's head, and Talia has Damien killed while she's having this huge war with Batman. And Batman literally has to go around the universe to try to bring Damien back to life. And Talia is just still one of those crazy baby mamas that just likes to start drama for no reason, especially when the baby daddy is happy with someone else. That could be very stereotypical and offensive, and if it is, I apologize, but that totally, in my mind, that's how that plays out. <laughs> and when I say that the baby daddy <laughs> is happy in his own personal life. I am talking about our last woman on this five woman list. And that is of course Selena Kyle. So I have said this in other videos and on my social media, but if you are interested in a deep dive into the romantic relationship between Batman and Catwoman that has begun since 1940, I did an entire video of that for DC Comics and it's on their DC Fans YouTube channel. I'll link that in the description. What hasn't been said about Bruce Wayne's Batman and Selina Kyle's Catwoman's dynamic? They have been drawn to one another since the first time Bruce saw the cat on that yacht. <laughs> in mainstream continuity, always flirtatious. On another Earth, they got married and they had a child who becomes Huntress. And no matter the media, film, TV, comics, video games, they have literally played the cat and mouse game for 78 years. So because of this, there are a couple of comics that do either allude or just straight up show that Batman and Catwoman have had a very sexual relationship. Animalistic, just raw passion, which is great and fitting and makes sense and is normal so i approve <laughs> and it's so okay because of course within dc rebirth bruce asks selena to marry him she says yes but and i'm sure everyone knows this by now at the moment they are not married it did not work out the wedding did not happen does bruce's personal romantic relationship life 
Does it ever work out? Not really. <laughs> But from the handful of women that we have discussed within this video, whether it be a fling or a full-on almost marriage, Bruce is a normal human that desires and needs intimacy to still stay as normal as possible. And whether or not he likes to keep his mask on or off, that's his business and I think we can respect that. Thanks for watching five women that Batman has definitely had sex with in DC Comics. That's such a funny title, but that's what we talked about, so yay comics! <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a bat, a bat, a bat thumbs up. Also, I definitely want to shout out MacGuffin Goods. They sent me two beautiful Batman pins. I hope you can see it. I wore it today. It is Adam West Batman and Burt Ward's Robin, which is a very iconic look from the Batman 66 TV show. And he also sent me this pin, which I will take out the paper because of the glare. If you aren't following Instagram right now, you totally should. It's at History of the Batman, and I am doing a full-on history of the Batmobile. I started literally from 1939 and as of this moment I am in the mid-2000s. I'm actually starting the Nolan verse so if you love the Tumblr and all that get on that because I'm about to start that this weekend. <laughs> Batmobile pin which is beautiful. It is based off of Dick Sprang's 1943 cover which is Batman issue 20, and it is the first time the Batmobile was on a Batman cover. So I want to say thank you to MacGuffin Goods for sending these to me. You're always awesome and very supportive of History of the Batman, and you guys should check out his Instagram and his website, and all of that information will be linked in the description below. Also in the description is, of course, all of my social media, so why don't you give it a follow and become a Gothamite? Check out my reviews for Kamikaze, and of course, please subscribe to this channel so you never miss a new Batman video, and I would love it so much if you became part of this Gothamite community. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will have more History of Batman soon right here on YouTube. Remember, Gothamites, it's all about peace, love, and Batman. Bye.